Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk some more about a conversation that I've been having in the comments of one of my YouTube videos, which I've referenced in a couple of videos already. But this conversation has caused me to think about a lot of different things. And one of the things it's caused me to think about is miracles. Because the conversation I've been having is with a believing member of the LDS Church. And in one of the last comments so far this person has made, they claim to have experienced a healing after a priesthood blessing. And so that really got me thinking about how I feel about stories of priesthood blessings or other miracles now, as opposed to how I used to feel about them. And if my views have changed and basically how do I explain stories like this coming up? Well, my instinctive reaction is to say, oh, well, coincidence or it didn't happen, right? You know, um, either something happened that was technically possible, although very improbable, and that's the explanation, no matter how improbable it was, as long as there's a scientific explanation for it, the scientific explanation is the one that we should go with, or that it just didn't happen, that the person is making stuff up or lying or exaggerating or whatever. But I don't think it's necessarily helpful to have that perspective when you're in the process of talking to someone online, because although the story is unverifiable for me, I don't want to have that perspective necessarily when I'm talking to the person that they're lying or that they made something up or to tell them, oh, it's just coincidence when I don't know all the details. And so for me, I have to actually think about, okay, what would happen if I or someone in my family, let's just say someone in my family, because I probably wouldn't ask for a priesthood blessing at this point, but let's say someone in my family was in excruciating pain and they had gone to a doctor and they knew the result was something that couldn't be fixed or that couldn't be immediately fixed. And they went to the uh, local priesthood leaders or whoever and had a priesthood blessing. And I was there and right after they had that blessing, they said the pain had completely stopped. And then they had the doctors check it out again and everything was completely fine and normal. And I got to see the before x-rays and the after x-rays and I got to hear the doctor say, we have no explanation for what happened. Okay, that's different. That's different because in that case, I would know as much as I can know anything that something had happened that there's no scientific explanation for it, given our current understanding of the world. So what would I think at that point? Well, there are several different explanations for this that different people and different groups would put forward. Obviously, someone who is a current believing member of the LDS Church would say, oh, well, that was the priesthood blessing. It was the priesthood blessing. They had the authority from God to heal this person. They used it and the person was healed according to their faith. And that is what happened. And, you know, if I didn't know anything else about the church besides that, that might be the explanation I would go with because it sure looks like that. You know, the scientific explanation doesn't work. So uh, why not take the explanation of the people who actually did the thing that appears to have made this thing change. But there are other explanations. Um, someone who was a mainstream Christian would say, oh, well, they used the name of Christ and they had faith. And so that's probably why it worked. They used the name of Christ and they had faith. Because we don't think that they have any special authority from God to do this, but we do know that the name of Christ is powerful. So that's one way to look at it. Um, Another way to look at it is from a general religious or spiritualist perspective, which is that because they were focusing on God and asking God for help, 
God decided to intervene in this person's behalf and make a change, regardless of whether or not uh, it was the Christian God or some other God. That's another potential way of looking at it. And then finally, there's a more general approach to this, which is not to give an explanation at all, but just to say, obviously, the scientific explanations don't work. This clearly contradicts with what we know about the world, but we don't have an explanation for it right now. And that might be what I would go with at this point. Um, but I think another possible explanation for this and other weird things that I've heard about happening, although I haven't seen any of those things happening, would be that we are actually in a simulation and that occasionally that simulation acts differently than the laws of science that we know generally work, um, predict that it would work. And I'm not saying that I think we are in a simulation. What I'm saying is that on the times, at the times when I open up my mind a little bit more to allow for these weird stories that I hear to be true, that is my go-to explanation for things like this happening because it covers everything that could possibly happen. Um, it covers stories of places being haunted. It covers stories of people thinking they have access to alternate dimensions. It covers stories of people thinking they've been reincarnated. Um, it covers all sorts of weird stuff. It covers stories of alien abductions. I mean, this all can be explained. Anything can be explained by us being in a simulation and someone messing with it. But that doesn't mean that we are in a simulation. It just means that I don't know. I don't know and I think I don't want to tie myself down to a particular belief in something that actually doesn't explain all the weird stories I hear but only explain some of them. Because that's the thing with the Mormon explanation for what happened in or what would have happened in this particular case if we're talking about me in this hypothetical situation. It doesn't explain all the other weird stories that I've ever heard in my life. So, depending on how far I open my mind in different cases, I just have to deal with that. And I don't want to open my mind only to the Mormon stories that are floating by in my uh, periphery in my life. Because here's the thing I know a lot of things about the way the story was told for a long time about how the Mormon church was started that do not line up with reality. I know a lot of things that the Book of Mormon says that do not line up with reality. I know things that were said in the Book of Abraham that do not line up with reality. And so I don't want to assume that only the Mormon stories are right here when I know that there's a lot of other Mormon stuff that just doesn't line up with reality. And that's how I feel about this right now. However, for me, this was an interesting thought experiment. And it set me wondering, what would you all think if something like that happened to you? What would be your take on it? How would you process something that weird happening to you or to someone you knew and trusted? So please let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, like it. And please consider subscribing. And I will see you all next time. Bye.